everybody. This is Dr. Guy, and I call myself the Genuine Scholar. Why? Because everything I do, I try to do it from the heart. I want to welcome you to another episode of I Won't Settle TV. Now I'm back for the third episode of my PhD You Can Be series. And today we're going to talk about financing your education. I get messages all of the time with individuals asking me, how do you pay for a PhD program? You know, I don't want to take out too many loans. How can I fund my PhD process? And so today what I'm going to talk about are some different alternatives. Now, I must say that it depends on your life situation because some of the, the things that I'm going to speak about, it's going to require that you work part-time and not full-time and you become a full-time student. And for some people, it's hard to become a full-time student. You have families, you know, you have responsibilities and you have bills. And so you have to work full-time. So it makes it difficult to go full-time in school. But let's talk about what some of these alternatives are. The first is what, you know, we call a fellowship. A fellowship is basically like a scholarship. They give you the money um, to pay for your school, they'll pay for your schooling, and sometimes the fellowships will actually give you a monthly stipend to live off of. You don't have to work, you don't have to do anything but go to school. The whole purpose is to get you through school. Now, different fellowships are structured in different ways, so I can't tell you that this is the only way a, a fellowship works, but the people I know who have received fellowships, they go to school full-time. Um, usually, the fellowship even cover housing if you stayed on campus, and so the fellowship, the primary goal of a fellowship is to get you through school. So you go to school full-time, you get your monthly stipend, something for you to live off of while you're going through school and you'll graduate. You don't have to pay anything back. It's just a great deal. But the thing about, about fellowships are that they are pretty competitive and there's not a lot of fellowships out there. And so, um, you know, that's the best case scenario, in my opinion, because I think the full time thing is a great, you know, being full time in college, um, not having to worry about paying for anything. I think that's the best opportunity possible. But there are some other opportunities. Um, one is called an assistantship. An assistantship is where you work on campus, usually around 20 hours a week, you'll work on campus and it'll cover your tuition and it'll give you a monthly stipend. But the difference between the assistantship and the fellowship is that you actually have to work somewhere on campus. So you may work in a multicultural office, you may be a teacher's assistant, you, you'll do something on campus you know, for 20 hours a week and it'll cover your tuition and it'll cover um, usually some type of stipend per month. Now here's a little little insight into how you can, if, if you have flexibility to do this, I know some people, you have your families, you live in a home, all those things, but if you have the flexibility to live on campus, you may want to look at working in residential life and having an assistantship through residential life, because if you have an assistantship through residential life, then residential life will pay for your tuition, they'll pay your monthly stipend, and you'll get to live on campus for free. And they usually give you some type of meal plan. So you have some type of meal plan. And so I think, I mean, granted, you got to work and raise life. So you live in where you work, you know, it's some, some, uh, there are some challenges that comes with that. But then again, if you look at the big picture, you know, you're saving a lot of money and they're covering your housing. But that's if you have the flexibility, especially for some of the young, younger individuals who are not married, um, who don't have any obligations. Why not go full time to school and go ahead and get your degree because you can still go to school full time. You're still getting a monthly stipend, like a little small paycheck. You're getting work experience and you get free housing and a meal plan can't beat that. Um, but then another alternative, something that this is what I did. You know, I work for the institution where I received my PhD. And so when you work for an institution, sometimes they'll pay money towards your um, tuition. And so in my situation, I think I got 18 hours per year that they cover. And so I took out a few loans just to cover that other part, but it wasn't nearly as much as if I went full time, didn't have any type of tuition reimbursement. Um, you know, then I would have, you know, tons of loans out. And so if if you work at a college, think about that alternative. Think about um, pursuing a degree at the school where you work and they'll pay back some of your um, tuition. And so the final thing is, you know, what most people try to avoid are loans. Now, I know you don't want loans. I understand loans are you have to pay those back and the interest rates. Wow. I understand, trust me. But in some situations, you know, you have to determine if this is if this is something you really want, you have to figure out are you willing to take out those loans? I mean, knowing that you have to pay them back. But that's something personal within yourself you have to figure out if you're willing to do. If not, then I say look at the other alternatives. But if you're going part-time, nine times out of ten, you may have to take out loans, or you can go part-time and just pay a little bit, you know, each time you take classes. But of course, the process is gonna be a lot longer. And so those are just some alternatives 
challenges. Maybe there are other things out there. Maybe there are some other scholarships, some other um, opportunities, but these are the ones that I know that are pretty common across graduate school. And so, yes, there are resources out there for you, but you have to do your research. You have to go on the internet and you have to look for these different opportunities. Look for fellowships. Look for assistantships. Go talk to the graduate schools. I know financial aid is cool, but when it comes to uh, funding your graduate education, the only thing financial aid is going to tell you is that they can get you a subsidized or unsubsidized loan, a graduate loan. You got to go talk to the graduate schools because they know about the assistantships. They know about the fellowships. So you need to talk to the graduate school or talk to the department um, where you're trying to get into. Or if you got into a department, go talk to them about those assistantships because I'm, nine times out of ten, they know where the assistantships are. But you have to apply early because the problem is a lot of us apply at the very last minute. So all the people who got admitted early on, they already have the assistantships taken whenever you get into the program. So that's the importance of going ahead to take go ahead and taking your GRE, um, which is your graduate record examination, which is the test to get into a, a PhD program. Go ahead and take that early um, so you can go ahead and apply at the beginning, whenever they open, um, you know, the application pools, go ahead and put your name in the hat so you can get accepted, so you can get those assistantships. It's important, I promise you. So um, I hope this video helped you a little bit. You know, this is just something to open your mind, but you have to do your own research. I can only give you so much. Go do your own research on assistantships, fellowships, um, working at a college, or loans. Go do your research. All right. So I hope to see y'all in the program. I hope to see y'all with an assistantship fellowship or something. And I hope to see y'all inspiring somebody one day as doctor, whatever your name is, because you can do it. I promise PhD you can be. So y'all have a great day. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me. My email address is it's at the bottom. I think I'm going to put it there. So go check me out. Write me. If you need me, find me on Facebook. Write me on Facebook. Um, tell others about the channel. Subscribe to the channel. God bless y'all. Have a wonderful day.